hello. This is Dasma here. Hope everyone is having a great day, a great evening, a great morning, whenever you're watching this tutorial. Today, we are going to touch base on community policing the right way. And I'm touching base on a chapter from my book entitled, Have You Ever? It's page seven in a book. And we're gonna touch base on a very sticky topic, a very sensitive subject. In this chapter, I spoke about people in my community who has done some bad things in their life. But one topic in particular I spoke about was a male who got into a confrontation with another male. And unfortunately, at the end of that confrontation, at the end of the, the fight, the loser of the altercation came back with a gun and ended up shooting the winner of the fight. And it was a very, very sad situation. After the murder, the loser of the fight, in the end, wound up only serving five years in prison for a murder. Why? Because the court saw it as a manslaughter because the winner of the fight was more of a bully. And my point for this topic is that we as a society has come to believe that the judicial system has come to lock minorities away for life and throw away the key there. But in this case, the guy only got five years and he was able to get out of jail. So that scenario isn't always true. In a lot of cases, it could be true, but in some cases, it is not true. Recently, there was a young man. I'm not going to give any any indications on who he is, but um, he was walking around playing in the streets with his friends. The guy, the boy had to be about 13, 14, maybe 15 years old, um, playing around with his friends, you know, just being a kid, having fun, being a teenager. Unfortunately, this kid had a BB gun and he was playing around with it, acting tough, acting, well, not even acting tough, just having fun with the BB gun, but it was, it was shown, you, you can see it in his clothing, and the police officers um, actually, you know, saw him and his friends hanging out. They pulled him over, and they wanted to know what was going on, what is this, this looks like a gun, it was. This situation could have turned out differently if the police officer wasn't a positive community policing, but... Thank God he was, and the situation did not turn out the way it turned out with, and I'm gonna speak about this topic because we all know about it, Tamir Rice. This is a very similar situation. Tamir Rice was in a playground with a BB gun. If a boy is in a playground with a BB gun, it's most likely a toy. If a boy, a teenager, is out in the community in the streets, you can assume that it's a real gun, but it was actually a BB gun. But the boy, 12-year-old boy in the playground, was shot dead. The teenager boy, walking around in the community with a bunch of other kids was not shot dead, but in fact pulled over, talked to by the police officer and told his parents what was going on. Yes, the boy got a citation that was a small fine, less than $300 that needed to be paid for walking around with your friends, you know, having a BB gun. But the point is, is that every police officer isn't bad and every police officer isn't quick to shoot a minority because the person who was driven home by this police officer was an african-american kid so i just want to shed a little bit of light on good and positive community policing let's not think that all officers are bad let's not think that all officers are trying to kill our children and ruin minorities lives because this boy made it home alive whereas though another boy Mr. Rice, unfortunately, did not make it home alive. But it's, it all depends on the perception of the police officer, and it also depends on if they are timid or not, if they are fearful. You know, you can't be an officer and be fearful. You've got to be strong. You've got to have some type of, you know, backbone. And just, you know, don't shoot first and ask questions later, you know. Let's evaluate the situation. Let's do positive community policing. Recently, actually, the other day, um, in the line of work that I do, I was speaking with, with the mother and a family of another boy who was driving around, hanging out in his community, just having fun, being a teenager. This this boy was about 17, 18, 19 years old. He's just out and about with his friends in the car and the police officer pulled him over. What was the reason? It was a busted taillight. The officer pulled 
the boy over, which is what the mother said to me, and we pulled the boy over, asked for the license and registration. The officer can smell weed, marijuana in a car. This boy doesn't have any, any health issues and he shouldn't be smoking marijuana as he's operating a vehicle anyway. So the officer had probable cause to take the car, arrest the boy, do whatever they needed to do as a police officer. But again, positive policing at its fullest. What this officer did was he made the boy and his friends call their parents. He made the parents come, pick up their children from the car, and he, the officer, allowed someone else to drive the boy's car home. Now, that is positive policing. Why? Because when he pulled them over, he realized that the kids inside the car spoke with mannerism. You know, they spoke, yes, sir, I'm sorry, sir. I didn't realize my tail light was broken, sir. And speaking with intelligence and speaking with kindness goes a long way. If he would have spoken, what you want, what you pull me over for, you know, all that negativity, that negative energy, negative energy will get you negative results. Positive energy will get you positive results. And that is what happened with this boy when he got pulled over from the police. So when we say that cops are quick to lock, to lock minorities up, because this incident was also with another African-American, it is not so that officers are quick to lock you up. Everything plays a part in determining what's going to happen when you get pulled over by a police officer. Your look, how you're dressed, the mannerism of everyone that is inside of the car with you will determine the overall effect of what happens that day. So at the end of that evening, the parents were called. The parents had to come out. They had to get their children, drive their children home. Of course, none of the children, um, the person who was driving the car, the operator of the vehicle was not able to drive the car because he was under the influence of marijuana, which could get you arrested, you know. But instead of arresting this 17, 18, 19 year old, what the cop did was gave them a warning, not even a ticket. Can you believe that? Gave him a warning and allowed all of the kids in the car to go home with their parents safely. Why? Because of the way they spoke. Why? Because the way they respected the police officers and the way they showed, oh my God, I've been caught. Yes, officer, I'm wrong. I can't believe I did this. I'll never do it again. Thus, the police officer gave them a warning. So let's keep that in mind. We will experience things, but in the end, in this situation anyway, it was the mannerism of the people inside the car that got them a warning. Now, we know the police officer could have arrested the people for being under the influence and having marijuana in the car. He didn't even check the car, to be honest. He could have checked the car and felt marijuana. This officer has the energy of God just trying to help people. He, he spoke to them until the parents came in told them, I'm letting you go. You guys seem like great kids, but you really need to get your act together. Don't be out here smoking marijuana. Don't be driving around under the influence. The situation could have gone anyway. So again, when we think that officers are quick to lock our children up, when we think that officers are quick to lock minorities up, we might want to reevaluate the situation. Yes, it is true some officers are bad, but it is also true some officers are very good. And I, happily know a couple of you know really decent you know honest hard-working police officers so let's just keep this in mind when we're thinking about police officers and them um, killing and shooting and locking up our children and giving them you know hard sentences because Caucasians get hard sentences too when they speak differently when they act differently you know differently meaning when they don't speak with intelligence our persona, the way we are, the way we act, the way we think, the way we feel, the energy that we give plays a role in everything and every situation that we come across. So keep this in mind. And before I close, I just want to touch base on another chapter from this book, which speaks about when I, too, was arrested by bad government officials, um, parole officers, um, stalked and harassed my children and I for a while. And at the end of the altercation, you'll read about this in the book, these bad parole officers had me arrested. They filed a fake report, lied about everything that happened, and made it seem like that I was the bad guy and had me arrested. And the same police district, not the same officer, but the same police district that helped the, the, the young kids who was in a car under the influence also helped me. And this is a beautiful thing. So I just wanted to shed some light. When I was arrested, I turned myself in to my community police station which is the same police station that 
just by luck, you know, pulled over these, these young boys. And when I turned myself in, they asked me what happened, why you're turning yourself in, why you're arrested. And I told them what happened and how they tried to, you know, pour their fire on my on me and how one took a swing at me. And when the police officers who put the warrant out for my arrest came to pick me up from my police district, when they came and arrest me, my police district, the detectives, they said, how can you arrest one person in a bar fight? It takes two people or two or more people to get into a brawl. But leave that as it may, I thank God to my community policing, to my positive community policing for having my back. They were on my side the entire way until the end, just making calls on my behalf. So I just wanted to shed some light because we have some great officers. We have some positive community policing. We have some great district attorneys, which you can read about in this book in a chapter entitled Good Apples. Once upon a time, 15, 20 years ago, I had a district attorney who helped me turn my life around completely. So I am aware that there are positive law enforcement workers, but unfortunately, I'm sorry to say, there are more negatives than positives. But the positives keep my hope. So this is Dasma here, everyone. Keep in mind, be mindful, be hopeful, and just give every officer the benefit of the doubt. And to all you peoples and everyone out here, when you come into a, a situation or a confrontation, I'm asking you and I'm saying to just keep the positive vibes, keep the positive energy, speak with intelligence, act with intelligence, and watch how your situation work out for the better. This is Dasma. This is positive community policing. This is also positive personal awards. Keep your energy good. Keep your flow positive. Watch your life change. Namaste. This is Dasma. And in closing, I'm asking everyone to find comfort and peace and serenity and positivity. This is the way to happiness. Namaste. Hey y'all, y'all see the ducks here? They're getting a police escort as they walk on the side of the road. Oh, Philadelphia Blue. Want to make sure the birds don't get hit by a car. How sweet. And that babies. Look. Oh, I didn't see the babies. That is so sweet. I was in this house for a minute wondering why the cop was stopped up there. But he wanted to make sure they crossed the street safely. That is adorable.